Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. Today we have a donation deck to play Stacks. This is the next generation of the Stacks aggro deck I've played a couple of times before on the channel and I've done pretty well with. So we're just sort of going back, revisiting it and seeing if any little quality of life updates that we can do can improve it. So in case you're unfamiliar with Stacks as an archetype, we are trying to restrain what our opponent can actually do in a game. So Sphere of Resistance to make their spells cost more, Chalice of the Void to cut off one drops entirely, Tangle Wire to tap down on our opponent's permanents. And the idea with Tangle Wire is we ideally want to have a creature in play first, so something like a Lowstone Golem, more taxing effects, or Crystalline Giant, which kind of just happens to fit in to be like the best threat in this, because we can't really run Patchwork, because we're not playing that many artifacts. And this kind of just fits in that little slot, like we'd like something better than this, but this is kind of what we've got right now, is our little three drop threat. And it's been pretty good for me so far. And who doesn't like seeing a bit of Crystalline Giant, right? So those are kind of our threats. We also have Palantir, which is card selection and, you know, becomes a draw engine pretty quick when we have some high CMC in our deck. We have a Crucible because we have Wasteland as well, so we can do a Wasteland lock. And then we have Khan, which can go and fish, fish up this entire wishboard we have here, which is enormous, and we'll go through in a minute. And we have Ugin. Again, this can provide a steady stream of threats as well as a little bit of removal. To power this out, we've got Ancient Tombs and City of Traitors, along with some Grim Monoliths. And we've also got some Cloud Post, Glimmer Post, but we're not like a Cloud Post deck. It's just a thing that we're going to have because we're a colorless deck. A few quality of life changes I've added to this list are the Inventor's Fair. I think this is probably better than the Tabernacle we did have in that slot. Tabernacle just never really sat right with me, to be honest. So having the Inventor's Fair seems like a good one, and the Palantir is a new addition too. And we have some interesting techie lands here, in case you haven't seen it before, the Mycinth Gardens. So we can pay X and tap this, and it becomes a copy of target non-token artifact that I control with mana value X. So what this can do is can copy Sphere of Resistance. That's the main thing we like to do with it. So we have our Sphere, and then we can just play the Mycinth Gardens and make another Sphere. And then if we have another one, we can do another one, and our opponent basically doesn't get to cast spells at that point. Although we have to be careful how we do it because we want to cast spells as well. But we can usually power through our own things relatively well as our whole deck's kind of geared towards that. Even though we're a colorless deck, Blood Moon isn't really that bad against us. So it shuts off some like little bits of tech we have. But we still get to cast our spells. It's not like we're an Eldrazi deck where we have actual colorless costs. So let's get into this big wish board. First up, the Migrate Traps obviously are not part of the wish board. If there are decks that can turn one us, we would like to have at least access to Mindbreak Trap, so that's what they're in there for. The rest of it is pretty much all calm board, apart from the Thorn of Amethyst as well, I guess. We're going to be boarding this in in some matchups, just as additional sphere resistances in the matchup where Thorn works like a sphere. So, you know, Storm and stuff like that. So then we just got the things you'd expect. So we've got the Lattice Lock, and we've got the sort of coating to strip away all their stuff with the Khan. Then we've got a Torpor Orb to shut down, like, the Death and Taxes and Initiative Creatures, stuff like that. We've got another Crucible if we want to set up ourselves with a Wasteland Lock. Wasteland Lock plus Sphere Resistance is going to be a miserable time for our opponent, and I'm absolutely down for that. We've got a bit of Graveyard Hate, so that you want zero mana Graveyard Hate, so when you fetch it, you can play it immediately. Uh, Source of Spyglass, this instead of Pith and Needle because of our own Chalices. A Stone Brain to exile some combo cards. And a Stone Bridge to sit behind. A Sky Sovereign, which can be removal as well as something that we can try and win the game with. Uh, Cityscape Leveler. This is an interesting piece of removal that we can reach for. When it's good, it's good. But how often we're actually going to fetch this instead of just latticing, I don't know. But there are definitely situations where their board is good enough that we need to get something to deal with it. And then we have Argentum Master Core. This is a relatively new one. Five mana, first strike, protection from multicolored 5-5. Five five. Okay, sounds pretty good. Beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice this card unless you discard a card. When you discard a card this way, destroy target non-land permanent and opponent controls with mana value less than or equal to the mana value of the discarded card. So we can pitch redundant cards or whatever and basically take out anything. This is just another sort of repeatable piece of removal that can get rid of all sorts of things. And that's it. That's a cyborg. That's a deck. We're going to be stomping all over people and making them have a miserable time whilst we laugh all the way to the bank with our lodestone golem. I think... The first time I played this, I went 4-1, and I only just missed out on the trophy. The second time I played it, I think I went 3-2. So let's see what we can do with the third time around. So remember to like and subscribe, and let's jam some stacks at someone. If you're looking to play Legacy on MTGO like me, why not try Card Hoarder? 
They're a rental service that I personally use and I found them better than other rental services that I've used in the past. So why not give them a try? All right, so we're on the play for round one, which is where we want to be. We have Chariot of the Void into Khan. That seems like the exact sort of thing that we want to be doing. So let's give it a go. Our opponent mulligan to six. Let's hope that our Chalice of the Void does some real work here. Really hammers home that mulligan. All right, Chalice just sticks. It's our opponent's turn. Ancient Tomb, all right. Lotus Petal. What flavor of Ancient Tomb Lotus Petal deck are we? And no follow-up, interesting. So this Khan is probably going to be quite good, would be my take. All right. Uh, we can blow up their Lotus Petal or we can just Go and get the liquid metal coat in and start in at our opponent that way. I imagine this card is going to do an awful lot of work against what our opponent's running. But they might be more like a show and tell style deck, and the Lotus Petal might be not what they're actually trying to accomplish here. Might just be a little bit of fast mana rather than a dedicated artifact deck. Okay. An island suggests we might be looking more of that sort of spectrum. Let's see if we can liquid metal coating our opponent. Just get rid of all of their permanents while, we, while we're at it. Um, we can just lattice lock our opponent next turn, so we might as well just do that. Give them the business. All right, our opponent's had enough. So one of the good things about our deck is we basically don't... Well, I say one of the good things. One of the easy things about our deck is that we're not really a deck that sideboards a lot. Because we have an extensive card wishboard, and all we can do is kind of tweak in the margins. I do think our opponent is playing... Show and tell. I don't believe that changes anything here. Like, we could play a Cityscape Leveler just so we can maybe get that in off of a show and tell. But I think having this in our hand, we can't cast it, is going to be pretty poor. So, can we just roll in again? Alright, we basically have the same curve as last time, but instead of a Chalice, we've got a Sphere. I think we can keep this. Like, it's kind of what our deck does, so if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. Lotus Petal and the Island. Alright. Let's put a Sphere in. Alright, we're getting a Force of Will this time. Pitching Transmute Artifact. Okay, so we're looking at the Coveted Jewel deck. So, our deck should be pretty good against this, to be honest. Should I work? Is Chalice for one even where I want to be here? Uncertain. Right, we're just in with this. Do we play this chalice for zero? I don't think it hurts to play it. We'll minus this Khan. Uh, actually, we're going to minus it, or are we going to minus it next turn? We'll just get rid of this Lotus Petal now. And then next turn, we can Lattice Lock our opponent, and it'll be lights out. It didn't have a force for the Khan. Let's go and get Lattice. Is this one sticking? Or not? All right, our opponent doesn't get to cast any more spells this game. I think we might have this one. All right, uh, nice quick match, classic stacks fashion. We gave our opponent a miserable time, and I'm here for it. All right, let's go to round two. All right, our hand for round two is a lot less impressive if you want to keep this one. It's the old turn one crystalline giant and hope it does stuff. I don't think we should keep this. Uh, we're not keeping this one either. Oh, yikes. Yikes indeed. Should have just kept Crystalline Giant. I've been betrayed. Um, Alright, so we're going to keep three cards. I guess we keep the mana here. Just in case of... Oh, no, we get to keep the Microsynth Gardens as well, actually. Because we're only on four. I think that is better than the Grim Monolith here. Could be wrong. We'll see. Another Ancient Tomb deck. Let's have a look-see. Chalice for one. All right. We don't care about that, so that's nice. Step one of my glorious plan. Um, it's kind of awkward. Like, we could play the Ancient Tomb and hope to draw into another Soul Land, but I don't think that's really odds on for us. We're just going to play the Cloud Post. And then we can Glimmer Post. And then we can Ancient Tomb and play the Khan with one mana floating. Chrome Mox, what flavour of deck are we looking at here? Red, okay. So just flat out. Yeah, this is 
looking more like a red prison deck because you wouldn't normally see Chalice of the Void out of goblins. All right, we're gonna be taking some damage to the old rabble master. We're not great at defending ourselves unless we just get some big creatures in. So we can put a Khan into play right now. What does that actually do for us? We can blow up their Chrome Mox. This is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. So that will cost us our Khan. So we'll blow up their mana, but then not have anything to show for it. The other option is to fetch something from our sideboard here. But what? Kind of like the Master Core. Yeah, if we get the Master Core, the next turn we can just start blowing all their stuff up. That seems seems like something I'd enjoy. Uh, what land do we play here? Does it matter? I guess if we play the Glimmer Post, that's three mana. Or five. So whichever way we do it, we have to play this Monolith. Because they're both plus one mana. This just doesn't cost us any life. This one gains us life, so that seems better. Something like a Worm Coil Engine is something I considered as well for the sideboard. Let's play a Monolith. Play a Khan. Let's go and get Argentum Master Core, please. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So if we get the Master Core, we can play it next turn. It's going to be big enough to survive a Fury. And it's going to be big enough to eat all of their creatures in combat. And then any bonus cards, we can start throwing stuff out. So we can discard a land to block their Chrome Mox, for example. Battle Crow Goblin. Okay, maybe they are more on the goblin -y thing. It's just unusual to see the Chalice of the Void. All right. So they're going to total our Khan immediately. And give us a little light jab to the face. Hopefully this Master Call will be a suitable enough roadblock. So it's going at Khan. This is at us. This is at us. This is at us. All right, they get a bonus Goblin from having enough power. So something like uh, an Instone Bridge isn't really going to help against the, these sorts. If we play this as a copy of Vesuva, this taps a three, this is four. So it's not good enough. So we have to play this Ancient Tomb. I haven't done the maths to see if we're dead on the attacks from our opponent. But we might be. Our creature can block a decent amount of damage. And the first try means it can always block Rebel Master without issue. So we'll be taking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, I think our opponent just has us dead here, right? All they have to do is activate their Chrome Mox. At the, um, well, they can activate it whenever and it's still good. Use their Chrome Mox, sorry, to activate the Battlecry Goblin. A little bit too slow this time, Mr. Mastercore. I was not expecting the Battlecry Goblin, though. So maybe we're looking at goblins with main deck Chalice. That's unusual. Maybe they'll show us another card we concede. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So if they activate, we are definitely dead. Alright, and they didn't. Okay. We didn't get to see any more additional cards. So, goblins. Uh, our Chance of the Void doesn't seem great if our opponent is on making a bunch of goblins. So we could just take these out and just play some guys so you'd have like main deck master core and like main deck sky sovereign like that's not unreasonable are we ever going to be wanting to get khan and then i think we're probably not going to be f tutoring for spyglass so i think we'll have the spyglass in the main this time and we c uh, the torpor orb i think we probably want that as well because they've got some goblins with some sketchy abilities you don't really want to deal with that was also a mult of four, right? So we were definitely up against it. Oh dear, oh dear. We have a wasteland lock. I'm not opposed to that. I wish this was ancient tomb instead of city of traitors. Because we could keep this and go turn one sphere and then turn to grim monolith into crucible. No, we can't. Do the, we'd have to wait another turn for the Crucible, wouldn't we? Um, is that going to be good enough? And then we can just Wasteland our opponent out. Or we could lead off on the Wasteland. And approach it that way. Hmm. I'm going to believe in this hand. And do the awkward City of Traitors turn one for Sphere Resistance. Let it be known, this is awkward. The other option here is turn one City... Grim Monolith, 
and Crucible on turn one. Or we go City, Grim Monolith, Sphere, one mana floating. Next turn, we can't make the Crucible. That doesn't seem great. Is it a case of, are we playing the Sphere this turn or are we playing the, the Monolith into Crucible? If we go Monolith into Crucible, next turn we Wasteland and Sphere. How good is that? How bad is Sphere Resistance going to be for our opponent? I think we just need to put the Sphere in. And then we'll navigate what comes next afterwards. My Goblin decks can kill you on turn one. But not underneath the Sphere. If I draw a Soul Land, I'm kind of tempted to play another Sphere. And I'll know that I'll be able to get our Grim Monolith on the go. Mike Synth Gardens. That's not really the one we want here, is it? So next turn we can play Crucible and Wasteland our opponent. So this is kind of the big turn of this game, whether our opponent can get something in. So it's just a Battle Cry Goblin. That's annoying. But we have a lot of time to do stuff about it. Alright, there it is. A Grizzly Bear. There's our Crucible. So we've kind of laid down what's going on in this game now. At some point we'll need to find a way of stopping this battle cry problem. But if they ever miss a land drop, we get to pull ahead in a reasonably impressive fashion, I think. Because we can play Sphere of Resistance next turn. Again, we are sort of under the gun a little bit. But we should find something to deal with this battle cry goblin before it kills us, as long as it's the only thing that's attacking us. Alright, I do not have a land there. It's pretty good news for us. A grim monolith. So this costs three mana to play, so we could... Got a Seat of Traitors in. If we play Seat of Traitors and play Grim Monolith, we can then play the Sphere. But then what are we doing with our Monolith then? What is the point of putting the Monolith in first? Do we want to save some mana up by deploying the Monolith? I don't think our opponent's going to be playing a spell next turn. So I think this is a good turn to get a Grim Monolith in. It is kind of annoying that we have to use this Seat of Traitors to do it with. But we've kind of uh, made this bed for ourselves. This Grim Monolith should just be enough to cast us anything we draw, basically. We have access to seven mana next turn. So even through our own sphere, we can cast Khan or one of those beefy boys that we added to our deck. A basic mountain does change the clock here. I think it lets them attack for three each turn. Right. Alright, they've got themselves a land there. So this incentivizes us to wasteland that. Which I'm more than happy to do. Crystalline Giant, though. That is a threat. So, if we go... This costs us four mana because of our own sphere. But it's pretty good at winning the game. Alright. Now we'll wasteland their Shadow Skull Pass. And replay our wasteland. This gets random ability. What is it going to have? Vigilance. That's a pretty good one. Basic mountain. So they can attack into us here. And threaten the trade. We don't need to take that trade because we can just play out our hand. And then make another copy of it soon. At some point our creature will eventually get lifelink. Or get a plus one plus one counter. Or get first strike. So plenty of options. We will take this. Now our opponent could also have some Simian Spirit Guides in hand, which can let them power out something above the sphere. All right, there it goes. I'd very much like to play this next sphere this turn. Multiple cloud posts though, that's kind of a hard one to pass up. But if I get the sphere this turn, I guess we'll see what the Crystalline Giant does. See if that changes our perspective. Lifelink, all right. That's a pretty big one. Right, so if we play the City of Traitors, we can just make a Sphere this turn. And then have a Sphere next turn if we want it with the Mycenth Gardens or another Crystalline Giant. And either of those should be enough to put this game away. Crystalline Giant getting it done. I guess they could have something like a Fury. And they can pay through the Sphere. So it does incentivize us to get the... Mike Sith Gardens down. Also, they could have Pyrokinesis. 
So we have to be careful about copying our crystalline giant while I have mana open. All right. We are not winning this race. Tangle Wire. This will tap our opponent out for several turns. It requires us to play a land that comes in untapped. Right now we need five mana for this, right? So we are we are a long ways off this. Well, let's see what our little friend does. Reach. Not one of the more useful abilities in this particular matchup. So what is the play here? We could Microsynth Gardens get ourselves another giant, but we should have done that pre combat if that's what we're going to do. Get another sphere. Well, I don't think our opponent's doing very much right now. We could just start playing out our cloud posts and generating more mana for the future. We'll invest in that. We didn't quite have enough to do that and untap our Grimolith with the two from our State of Traitors. But that is something we can do in the future. Cavern of Souls. Nope, we'll just allow this. Are they going for the pump? They are. Put out a cloud post. This gives us access to a reasonable amount of mana next turn. So we can just play Tangle Wire and our opponent doesn't get to play magic for the rest of the game. Tangle Wire will be very one sided because we have so many permanents to tap. They didn't do anything last turn with the same configuration of mana, so I'm not expecting them to do anything this turn either. Yep, just dealing us three again, putting us back. It's just undoing the lifelink, but our life total is stationary in there. There's very much not. So, we will play our wasteland. Play a tangle wire. So our opponent has to tap down all their opponents in their upkeep. Meanwhile, we've got some flying now. Exciting. And yeah, we stack the tangle wire, so we tap three permanents. So we just tap the wire and the two spheres. They can put mana into their goblin, but it doesn't do anything. We got the squeeze. So think about crystalline giant. It doesn't really look good, but it kind of does what we want of just playing a thing, and it kind of gains momentum on its own and does some useful stuff. So put the fading counter on top. We tap our wire, a crucible on one of these. We're just gonna just play some more wastelands. Make sure that our tangle wire taps down all of their permanents. We only need to get one more attack step and this game should be over. Can't play Palantir because of our own stuff, but that's fine. Oh, it's got death touch now, that's exciting. So they'll untap, they'll tap all three of their permanents. We'll untap, we'll untap, we'll tap two permanents and then we'll kill our opponent. Pulverize, I guess. That's a sorcery, actually, so they can't even do that then. Okay, my plan worked. Let's just go in again. Just good old-fashioned stacks magic. So we can play turn one Torpor Orb. That's pretty useful. And then maybe work towards our Crystalline Giant and Lazestone Golem. All right, what are we going to see here? Blood Moon. Okay. Now that slows us down for sure. But also slows our opponent down. And we can hopefully get our Torpor Orb down before our opponent gets to make any common to play goblins. Now we've just got a 2 3 4 curve here. No Grizzly Bear from our opponent. Get ourselves a Torpor Orb. Stick a goblin and shut off. Rabble Master. Rebel Master, sure. Uh, Grim Monolith, what does that actually do here? It allows us to make a Lowstone Golem, but I think I'd rather just make the Giant here. Like, we're going to want some lifelink somewhere down the line, and this guy can hopefully get it. Flying, okay, that's useful. We also have a 3-3 three, three in the face of their 1-1, one, one, so we can gobble those up quite handily. And as soon as this gets first strike, it becomes a, a bit of a beast. Now this is terrible news for us. So if we block, they sacrifice one and throw it at our guy. I think we have to take it here. I don't want to trade this for two tokens when it could get like lifelink or first strike and then change things. Now if they want to trade their rabble master for it, that's fine. But that's the thing they'd have to sacrifice. With all this mana in our hands. Right, I guess we go to tax and see what this gets. Trample. I don't think we can hold back. Um, I don't mean I don't think we can attack with it, sorry. I think we have to hold back. 
I think our opponent's got this one. The Bombardiers, particularly annoying. We can double block the Bombardiers this turn. If they give us that opportunity. Okay, our license Hurst, we don't care about that. Actually, we do care about that, right? Because that's the thing they sacrifice to the Broadsword Bombardiers. So they can throw this at one of our guys. They have to do it before blocks, though. Otherwise, we get to double block on the Broadsword Bombardier and be guaranteed to kill it. And without that on the board, things look better for us. Still not great, but better. All right, so yeah. They're correctly identified they need to attack the Rebel Master here. So they throw the hearse at our... It doesn't really matter which one they throw it at. It will kill either of them. And the other one go, probably ends up going under the Rabble Master bus. And then we're trying to draw, like, Sky Sovereign. To down the Bombardiers. I think we just have to trade with this now. Sky Sovereign is not a creature when it enters, so it will still trigger underneath the Torporob. Right, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So our opponent's pretty close to killing us next turn. Crystalline Giant, you say. Hexproof is an ability it can get. Or plus one, plus one counter. That can be somewhat useful here. Flying. Okay. The Crystalline Giant giveth and the Crystalline Giant taketh away. Oh no. Like basically any creature here is terrible news for us. Yeah. So they can just throw this at our Crystalline Giant. Hit us for two, three, four, five. And then next turn they have a Stone Cold Dead. Well, giving us a chance to block here. So we have to trade for two tokens. They might just throw that token at our face, actually. Because that's two, four, six then. That puts us to four. And right, they're going for the trade here instead. I think that's actually slightly better for us. Sky Sovereign, please. Like, our Denton Master Call doesn't do it because they can throw the Magus at it. As well, they can also throw the Magus at us, too. That is not Sky Sovereign. That's us dead. GG's opponent. You were the superior ancient tomb deck. I think they probably went a bit hard boarding against what we were doing. I think if they just have like a fast goblin hand, that probably just is where you want to be. This is definitely more prisony than I've seen from other goblin decks. So interesting. Let's go to round three. All right, our opening hand for round three is a little bit slow, so I'm going to mulligan this one. Oh dear. On the draw, I just don't think we can keep this. All right, now we're talking. So we go over Caracas. I don't think we want this Grim Monolith. He's got us, uh, ourselves a handy sphere. Right, our opponent's underway with a misty rainforest being immediately cracked. Into Volcanic Island. We're looking at Delver. We're looking at Delver. Ancient Tomb, not really where I want to be against Delver. But our deck kind of also struggles without it anyway. Maybe we're going to go slightly slower with Cloud Posts. Or do we jam the Ancient Tomb in the Sphere to get some action out of our opponent and then play our things? Because I'm expecting this to get Wastelanded. Sure. It's going to be days into Wasteland, I reckon. And then we can play our Cloud Post, then our Cloud Post, then our Glimmer Post and get back a whole turn of attacking from the Delver. I'd like this to not flip, obviously. And it looks like we've dodged that for a turn. All right, no Wasteland. That's good news. What is it? It's, it's news. There's some description. Another Delver. That's probably not great for us. Crystalline Giant, you say? I do like a Crystalline Giant. A bit more than, than most, I would say. I think... Tapping this Ancient Tomb is a big deal, though. I don't really want to play in today's... So I'm going to play this Cloud Post. And then next time we can play the Glimmer Post. And play Crystalline Giant. And we don't have to tap the ancient tomb unless we're paying for a daze. Let's see how bad this is for us. No flip. Okay. So I have two cards in hand that are not instants or sorceries. Ponder. Sure. So next turn these delvers will most certainly be attacking us. Alright, there's a land. Venter's fair. So we could just play this cloud post to have more mana next turn. But I think it is the glimmer post and the Giant here. We lose one life on the Glimmer Post, but I think that's acceptable. Our opponent's probably reading this one, which is fair enough. If they're going to Lightning Bolt, they have to do it now. Looks like that's what's happening. 
So maybe we buy ourselves a turn with a Tangle Wire. Yep. I think we're going to have to be in Tangle Wire mode very soon. Certainly a matchup where I would have liked to have had the old Chalice on one. My friend's got two turn clocks in play there. Ugin the Ineffable. We could try that this turn, or we could try the Tangle Wire. Tangle Wire will tap down all of their permanents. But then when it comes back to us, it's going to tap down it's some stuff. I think we're going to be in a bad spot then. I think we just have to go for the big dragon. Days is good here. Yep. Uh, I don't think we're winning this one. Because Delver, we don't really have anything we want to be changing up, I don't think. I think we're just going to roll back in again. We have a chalice, but we can't play it on turn one. Which kind of means that it gets caught by days and all sorts. Of, I think we just have to muddle in this. Um, this hand's got similar problems. Can we afford to go lower? I think so. We're looking for basically just turn one chalice is the ideal here. Okay, I think we have to keep on this few cards. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have the permanence to make Tangle Wire work. I think we just need to keep our lands here. Right, let's play out a Wasteland. It's less likely to get wastelanded from our opponent, but it could be. The difference between a turn one chalice and a turn two chalice is everything, really. A cloud post, not really playing that right now. I think we have to try and jam this, otherwise our opponent's just going to run away with this game. We just give them another turn to cast two one drops. All right, at least we're getting a force. So now we can Grim Monolith plus cloud post. Next turn, Vesuva the cloud post. Uh, we've got a lot of mana then, we just need to pay off. The channeler. Just a 1-1 one, one for now. Tangly wires, eh? Let's play out this cloud post. Let's play out this grim monolith. Do I want to use our grim monolith to tangle wire? This buys us some turns while we draw some action. I honestly think that's probably fine. Costs us our grim monolith, but... We should be getting another cloud post into play anyway. And that'll be enough mana to untap our Grim Monolith. Alright, another force. Pitching force. Alright. Ponder. This will be the third card type in Graveyard. They're just looking for a land or a creature here. Left the card on top of their library. It's probably a fetch land. Or a wasteland. Either of those is pretty bad for us. There's a fetch land. We've got something to follow this up with. All right, just smashing us for a bit of damage there. Crucible of Worlds. Well, we got our opponent in the Wasteland lock, but they're just beating us down. Well, provided this resolves. All right, they're gonna Lightning Bolt us. Puts us to 10. That's a two turn clock they're representing now. Two, four, five, six. I don't even think we can afford to Wasteland here. Wasteland stops them from getting us with a Murktide, but the Murktide makes their channelers smaller, but it's a Murktide. I think we need to hold open the Wasteland in case we have an Ugin that we can cast. I think our opponent is going to give us the full Delvering. Meltdown. This is just so they can do some surveilling with their Dragon's Rage channel. That does not do it, and we are sunk in this round. Alright, that's unfortunate, but that's sometimes the way it goes. If you can't assemble what you need on turn one against Delver, they can certainly run away, but they would have had the force if we'd have had the turn one chalice. But, yep, yeah, a bit awkward. Let's go to round four. Alright, our opener doesn't really play in a quick enough fashion, so I'm going to have to mulligan this. Alright, this is a nice hand, sort of. It does some things. One of these cards has got to go. This is a tough call, actually. Maybe it's the Khan. Noble Hierarch. Okay. Let's see the awesome might of turn one Crystalline Giant. We want to get our threat down, I think, and then we're going to like tangle wire our opponent and do all that sort of jazz. Okay, we got a 4 4. It's going to be Minsk and Boo. Fail the Mirror Break. Okay. That's pretty good against tangle wire, truth be told. Common to play tap land is a little bit annoying, but... Okay, let's see what our Crystalline Giant's up to anyway. 
flying. I think we'll bash for four. Um, I think we probably want the sphere. No, I think we want the tangle wire, right? Yeah, we play the wire out this turn. We kind of lose next turn a little bit. Is it an artifact creature or lands? So they can't tap their Fear of the Mirror Breaker. So they have to tap all of their permanents here. Which stops them getting a treasure this turn and does slow them down. I mean, pitch two cards there. They've got a Wasteland. This Wasteland is actually very good. It means that our Tangle Wire is going to have to tap down our Crystalline Giants. Which is annoying. That is a bit of a pain. We'll just play Attack Cloud Post while we can. First strike and flying, that's exciting. So they've got to lose three permanents this turn. So they might just keep the Shaman because that can give them additional permanents for next turn to tap down. I believe that's what's going to happen here. Yep, let's push a little bit of damage, add another permanent to the board. Another Wasteland. Yeah, that's pretty good. I don't really know what my opponent's playing. It just looks like Jund. Is there anything else going on here? It's like Food Chain in there? Or what? Let's see what our Crystalline Giant wants to do today. Lifelink, Flying, First Strike, these are all useful things. We'll stay on the offensive. We're only tapping down two of their permanents this turn, which is not many. So it's probably like Treasure and either Reflection or Hierarch. Alright, Reflection and the Shaman, that's interesting to me. So maybe we need to cast some sort of black spell this turn. But they could have just used the treasure off the shaman, but I guess if you're burning the treasure anyway, it doesn't really matter. I don't know, it's just interesting. Delighted halfling, sure. We're going to natural order now. Shoulders edict. Goodbye, our only threat. Alright. I think our opponent is ahead right now. Tangle our tap itself. Wasteland's not really doing much. Like we could play a sphere, but I don't think it helps us. I think it hurts us more than it helps. I guess we'll play out of the gardens. Can't really do anything here. They can tap one permanent, probably just the treasure. And then this turn, they can create a hoof and kill us. We could create a hoof and then Kiki Jiki reflection it. That'd be pretty sick. It's just like a Minsk and Boo. There it is. I don't think we're coming back from this. All right, that didn't go very well for us. Mammoth is not going to do much work here, but the chalices do look good, so I think we're probably going with our main deck configuration again. Again, we don't really have a turn one play, and the other stuff we do isn't very good, so let's mulligan this. Um, the blast zone is actually pretty tasty here. I think this is a keep, but it's not a very impressive keep. Closed-in Golem is going to cost a lot of mana. I guess we probably ditch the Golem. We've also seen Wastelands from our opponent. Yeah, it's a little bit tough out there. Like, our only real fast mana is the Ancient Tomb or the City of Traitors. For the turn one plays, which is awkward. When we have those, you know, it's great. But when we don't, it's awkward. Stalactite Stalker. All right, we're just looking at some good old-fashioned Junding. Now the issue becomes that our opponent is the one with a threat on board. We do have five mana for next turn though, which is pretty reasonable. The blast zone though is hopefully going to clear some stuff up at some point. All right, so they're going to get in for three here and then their guy's going to grow. I think this is the turn we have to blast zone. So we take out their guys, one of which is a mana producing guy. And this sets them back underneath the, the sphere again. And then maybe we can get out in front of it with a crystalline giant. Maybe our opponent was also relying on the hierarch for red mana. A wasteland. So a two drop like Tarmogoyf or something. With a bloom command. And we're going to get back to land. Okay. Like it is better to play this Grim Monolith first. Because then we can untap it later. We also get to do this, play this sphere, and wasteland there, wasteland, the classic. All right, crystalline giant, get big, get big and strong. Oh, it is getting big straight away, cool. If you could choose which mode you got from this card, it would be great. 
probably fair by today's standards as well. Right, we're going to see a two-drop here. Was it Assassin's Trophy? They're casting and questing Druid front side or back side, whichever side you want to call that. A tangle wire. Okay, we can kind of get in at our opponent a little bit here. One, two, three. Yeah. So we have the permanents are tapped down. We get punished a little bit by our wasteland, but it is what it is. It's just ruin our opponent's ability to play the game. No way, sand is good news for us. When are you going to find us this time? Lifelink. Love a bit of lifelink. Big fan. Play our land. We can use this to untap our Grimonlith. So you just have all the mana next turn. See, this is what I'm all about. Getting the tempo in with the Tangle Wire. Let the Fading Counter go first, and then the Wire and the Sphere tap. So it doesn't impact us at all this turn. Not very exciting, unfortunately. But we're gaining a lot of health. I don't think there's any point playing out this Ancient Tomb. Is there? Three, three, no. I don't believe so. So lose two of their permanents. Probably Questing Druid and land. Rather than two lands. Oh no, both lands going down. Interesting. Wouldn't mind a little bit of Hexproof on this poor little giant. Just to keep it safe. We shut off our opponent's one drops. Flying Vigilance, Lifelink, First Strike. Our opponent's at one. Yeah, a win for Crystalline Giant. You love to see it. Cyborg wise, again, I don't think we're doing anything here. We're just going straight back in. That Blast Zone was incredibly clutch, if I'm being honest. All right, let's go back in. We've got a turn one Crystalline Giant. I'll, I'll take that. Or possibly a turn two Khan if we want to play things differently. But I think we probably just want to get the Giant up and running. Oh, no, we're just going to play a Chalice for one. That is a better start. Next time we can play out the Giant, or we can play out the Khan, depending on what our opponent does. If our opponent doesn't commit anything to the board that can pressure a Khan, then I'm more inclined to get the Khan going. But if they play some sort of threat this turn, then we're probably better off getting the Giant down. Him to Turak. Let's see what we lose. Okay, well, that's decided for us what we're doing then, I guess. Um... Okay, so we play this out. We play this Grim Monolith. Play this Khan. They can't lightning bolt this, so it's going to be pretty tricky to remove. Let's go and get ourselves a liquid metal coating. So next turn we can start to strip away our opponent's permanence. Collector Oof. Pretty good. Pretty good. So we've got things that can just blow this guy up if we draw a land. We did not draw the land this turn, though. That is unfortunate. Let's have a look at our sideboard. Yeah, we needed, like, to be able to put Sky Sovereign into hand. Hmm. We can't get everything out enough. Are we just supposed to put Sky Sovereign into hand and have it for next turn at the loss of our Khan? That is an interesting one. We could go and get Bridge right now. Play this, play the bridge, and we still have three cards in hand, so this can just attack and kill the Khan. And then what are we doing? Not a lot. I don't mind hiding behind a bridge if we have a Khan. So, what do we want with our turn? We play the Vesuva. We probably have to copy our own Ancient Tomb here. And then, if we plus on this, and it goes down to two next turn, and again it will die immediately. Hmm. Two, four, five mana. I think we want the Argentum Master Core. I think this is a sort of grindy game where that's going to come in pretty handy. Are we deploying this liquid metal coating for later, or is this just a thing we can discard to our Argentum Master Core? I think it's the latter. Let's just save that. So we're going to lose our Khan, but then we get to put in a massive creature that hopefully is going to be a difficult one for our opponents to remove. And then every turn we get to untap with it, we get to blow something up for our opponents. And just ride this large beast to victory is the plan. With a bloom command here, maybe. Taking out Chalice, probably milling, I would say, and get themselves a land. Yep, exactly what they're doing. 
What are we going to see here? Miri's Guile. I don't see that every day. If you're unfamiliar with this one, it's like ponder every turn, but not quite. So you get to uh, rearrange the top three cards of your library in your upkeep. That's it. So this is going to kill our Khan. Yep. Now we get to play our big boy. City of Traitors. I don't mind that. That saves us some life. I will take that. All right. Every time this sits in play is excellent for us. So let's hope it gets to sit in play for a lot of turns. So our coating can get rid of this. Oof. Black, black. We're going to see a dismember. Liliana. Okay, don't see that every day. It's going to ruin us pretty hard. Okay, I guess we're playing... Let's try to work out if we want to save ourselves the life. We might have to save ourselves a life here. We're probably going to lose our City of Traitors to do that. I think we just do this now. And then next turn we can copy it. And just have two big friends. And hopefully that will do something. So we've got Skyship Sovereign instead of the Identum Master Core. We get to take out the youth, but then the Liliana just gets to plus all the time. I don't know. Like a walking ballista doesn't do much there. Okay, that's pretty good. I can take out our gardens. Land terminates. Well, our opponent's playing a really old school jund. Alright, we'll get rid of I guess it's the coating. Time has come and gone for the coating. We could turn this into a tapped grim monolith at the cost of two life. I don't think that's worth doing. Two life is a real amount. Oog in the spirit dragon, though. Sign me right up. So it starts on four. So if we minus this, it'll just get killed. So I think we have to manifest. And I don't really want these ancient tombs. If we play this glimmer post, that's going to cost us. Well, we have a cloud post hiding underneath this. So... I guess we just hold for a turn, and then if our spirit token dies, which seems likely, we then get to put the cloud post into play and then start Vesuvering, and then we can glimmer post it. Or we can just get two glimmer post activations and just gain a little bit of life. Alright, that's pretty annoying. I suppose the Liliana can cause us a little bit of troubles here. Oh, they're making us sacrifice our guy. Okay, that's not so bad. So we're going to lose three on this Ugin this turn. Like a lightning bolt to finish it off would mean they just attack us. Right, attacking the Ugin for three. Overall, that's probably fine. This also does reduce colorless spells by two, which might be pretty clutch, considering our life total is in danger. Another cloud post. The top card. A Khan, that's a pretty tasty one. Um, I do think we have to start doing this though. Get our cloud posts in because we might need our glimmer posts in the near future. So we can chump block every turn until we start. Oh, I see the beast is probably going to be bad for us. What do they find? Stalactite stalker and a surge of extraction. Well, one of those is a threat, so I'm not happy about that. I don't believe I have to care about the. Surgical extraction there. But there is an ever growing selection of threats here. Yikes. That's a big one. Okay, so we can block two damage. If they attack with just this, we're not dead. So they have to attack with the oof and the boo to kill us. Now they should probably see that line. But they have lethal damage here. Sure. Surgical Extraction targeting Crystalline Giant. I don't believe that has ever happened in a game of Legacy before. So here we are. They had lethal on board if they attacked with both. So... So this is... It's not even attacking us. So this will kill Ugin. Do we want this Khan in our hand? Um, I don't think so. And we don't have the mana to do the Khan stuff. We can't untap our monolith. Palantir is not really where we're at here. So if we play a Glimmer Post right now, 
That gives us a little bit of life to work with. I haven't done the maths. That's not really for us to do here, is it? Uh, let's smash this in. So we can block here. They'll just fling, fling that at us and kill us. Tap for four. Well, they missed lethal last turn, so I guess we'll keep playing. Uh, don't want either of those. Khan, interesting. So they should be able to work out how to kill us this turn. So they can attack us with an 8-8 boo, and that kills us. But again, they missed lethal last turn. So I live in the slim hope that they miss it this turn. You can attack for 8 here. All right, so if I block here, I take 8. If I block here, I take 5, 6, 7, 8. So I am just dead here. We were so close that match. I uh, felt like we were, we were getting it done, and then it kind of just stopped. I think the Argentum Master Core did not really pan out for us. Um, but they did have like all the right removal all the right time. So, All right, so we're going on to the final match now. I think we're looking for the 2-3, which isn't great. On the play of the final round, we have a good curve here. We've got turn one, Chalice into Giant into Trinus, um, into Tangle Wire. This is more what we want to be doing with our lives. The opponent has mulligan to five. I still think we are chalicing on one rather than zero, but it becomes more of an option when your opponent mulligans more heavily. But if they're playing like Reanimator, then Chalice on one is going to be excellent. And Reanimator is way more likely and is going to be mulliganing more than like Storm decks, which obviously still mulligan, but they're not as common as Reanimator decks. One in black, so far perhaps. Basic Swamp. Evoke Pitching Thoughtsies. Have a look at our weird cards. Are you going to take our Crystalline Giant? It would be very rude. Right, they took the Tangle Wire. Interesting. No respect for the Crystalline Giant. I do want that, but I would rather have the Crystalline Giant in play right now. And start working away on our opponent's life total. The powerful Crystalline Giant is back. And this time, it's Vigilance. <laughs> Alright. Skiff into the Crystalline Giant. Too powerful. Um, so we're probably looking at Reanimator. So we could play something like Mindbreak Trap for their like really explosive hands, but I don't think that's where I want to be. We could play the Thorn of Amethyst. Maybe that's going to be better than an Ugin. Maybe it's better than a Khan. I don't think we want Mindbreak Trap though. Like they can do some pretty gross stuff, but they're normally going to thought seize us before. If they're doing a turn where they play lots of spells, they're going to be thought seizing us. We're better off just prisoning them out. Uh, this hand is very slow. I think we have to mulligan this. All right, this one I can live with. We're probably shipping the oh the wasteland. I don't think our mana base is going to be under duress. And we can go ancient tomb into inventor's fair. If that's what we want to do. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to cast this chalice. And our opponent's going to cast in tomb in response. Does that mean we're supposed to cast the sphere instead? I think it's still chalice though. Here comes your tomb. Oh, a dark ritual. Very exciting. An opposition agent. Okay. We're on a slightly different sort of mono black than I was expecting. That's fine. We don't really care about the opposition agent. Right, so they attacked us four, and now it's back to us. Palantir or Thunk. That's pretty cool. Let's get that going. And then we can Tangle Wire to buy ourselves some time. We've got lots of permanents to tap down with it, so it's going to be a very one-sided Tangle Wire. The best kind. Orcish Bowmasters. Okay, so they're probably going to choose us to draw the card. Awkward, for sure. Um, we don't really want either of these. Okay, so we've drawn a Microsynth Gardens off of that. Now it's our opponent's turn. Lake of the Dead. Grave Titan. Just another Oppo Agent. And a Bowmasters. So tapping down four of their permanents is not really going to help here, is it? Because we're going to be on... What, we're taking three, six, seven, eight. Yeah, our opponent's just got us dead here. Okay, so they're not as graveyard as I thought they were going to be. 
and our thorns don't look as good as I thought they were going to look. Maybe we want some more fair stuff in here. We'll higher up the curve. Um, we do just want this Ugin back in. Chalice into Lowestone Golem is kind of tempting, isn't it? I think we can roll with this. Seat of Trait is obviously slightly awkward because we'll, we're we're going to have to lose it relatively quickly, which happens a fair bit. Just get this down. Shuts off a bunch of their lines. All right, Grief Pitching Massacre Worm. Our opponent's got some cool stuff in their deck. So whatever they take here, we get to do something. Because we'll either have Giant or Lowestone Golem or whatever. We've gone for the Monolith. Sure. We can deploy Crystalline Giant, but we're kind of all in on it. We could always go slower and deploy the Crucible of Worlds. I think that's probably where we have to go here. It's not perfect, but I like it. Dalphy Voidwalker. Okay, that's kind of annoying with our Crucible. But... All right, so if we play this land, that's that's it for this land. But if we don't play this land, we're not doing anything, so it doesn't get to come back. We're all in on our Crystalline Giant in the face of Shouldered's Edict, I'm sure. We have Reach, not Shadow. All right, they're just bashing in for three with the Daddy Voidwalker. Right, Lost and Golem, we can't use. At some point, this might get lifelink. Or plus one, plus one, and that changes the maths. So we are winning the race, but our opponent has three cards in hand. So, Bowmasters, by the looks of it, yeah. So now they are winning the race. But if we can get Lifelink on our guy, or Vigilance, then that changes things. But if they can kill our guy, then rest in pieces. Mike Synth Gardens. Do I want another Crystalline Giant or not? Let's see what our Crystalline Giant does first. Vigilance. Okay, that's a pretty handy one. Uh, so we could Khan here, or we could Lodestone Golem, or we could copy our Crystalline Giant. Hmm. Copying the Crystalline Giant is probably something we should have done before combat. Do I want this Lodestone Golem? I guess it doesn't really impact us. And we can always Mike Synth Gardens later. If we draw another land, then we can just get another threat in that way. Opposition Agent, sure. Our 4-4 is pretty good against their 3-2, but August Bay Masters is an annoying card they could have. Should get some information based on how our opponent attacks here. Just the Dalthy Voidwalker. Okay. Would I like another Lowestone Golem or another Crystalline Giant? This doesn't... This, well, this does impact the clock. Hmm. It's on 12. I kind of want another Crystalline Giant. Instead of the Lowestone Golem... This one will be tapped. Lifelink on this one, please. No. Flying. This is going to be a tight race when it comes down to it. If our opponent's got more stuff, though. That's kind of awkward. Okay, opposition agent here. So we block, block. Three, four, five. And we kill them on the backswing. No, we don't kill them on the backswing. We might kill them on the backswing. Ancient Tomb is not a free... So we've got all just bone masters here, we're absolutely boned. Right, so we're effectively on four. So we block one of these. Four. If we block this, we die, we block this, we die. So this has to gobble up this guy. And then we die to Walkish Bow Masters. No Walkish Bow Masters. One card left in our opponent's hand. Are they just saying you either have to have it or not? With our crystalline giant. So if this gets lifelink, we go up to six. Three, four, five, so we're still alive. If this gets lifelink, we go up to five, so it's three, four, five, so we're still alive. If this gets plus one, plus one, we're still alive. So we got some hits here. Uh, first strike, that's not the one. Trample, that's also not the one. Yeah, we'll show ourselves the door. Oh, we we're close. Um, the old crystalline casino there didn't quite pan out as I wanted it to. But... Uh, like I said, it's kind of the best thing we have for that slot, but it just didn't really work out. So our league finished at a very miserable one and four, but let's look at the deck and discuss why that might be the case. 
So, the first time I played this deck, the format was definitely slower, and prisony pieces were better. The second time we played the deck, things had changed a little bit more, and now things have changed even more to the point where we need a lot of help with this deck, I think, now. So, part of the problem is, unlike other prison decks, we don't have additional pieces of fast mana. We're relying entirely on Ancient Tomb and Seed of Traitors. And Seed of Traitors obviously comes with a downside. But I think it's so essential to this deck that we probably just need more of them or other ways of making fast mana. Another thing as well is we could have... We, we sometimes get stuck a little bit under our own sphere effect. So if we had some lands that could win us the game like Urza's Saga, but then you're kind of building a different deck. I guess you could just put a bunch of zeros so we could have some like lotus petals and things to try and power out but then we end up kind of falling a little bit short like in the in the sort of mid game because we kind of have to cut from here which is kind of what our deck's trying to do really so it is it is a frustrating one trying to get this to work together we also don't have like keys which could help our monolith so we, if we were playing as a saga we could also run a key that we could go and fetch and then start tapping for mana it just feels like the format has kind of changed a little bit from where you where we were before with, with this sort of stacks aggro deck. What we really want is the ability to have every opening hand with an ancient tomb. That would, that would really help. But failing that, we, uh, we kind of need like a, something to do on one mana or more ways of getting two mana because we don't get to do anything turn one if we don't have an ancient tomb, basically. And if we don't do anything on turn one, that can be a problem because if we start putting prison pieces into play on turn two, our opponent might have like a Dragon's Race Channeler or a Delver, and then we're just going to be behind to it the whole game, which is certainly what happened. Whereas the games where we started off with Ancient Tomb, put in a prison piece, untap, put in a different piece or a threat or whatever, those games we felt really good in and we did a lot of smashing. But it was not to be every game, sadly. So I think we don't have the reliability that we need, and the format is now faster so that trying to do stuff from turn two onwards is actually a little bit slow. I think out of the sideboard, I'm not really convinced on Argentum Master Core. I know I've seen it in a few other lists, but it does seem a bit awkward. Like, if it does get up and running, it does kind of do its thing. So maybe maybe it is worth it. Uh, maybe it's the Cityscape Leveler that goes. That feels a bit surplus to requirement, I think. Maybe we could have some kind of Walking Ballista or something like that. But I think we do need to have a bit of a rework of this deck to get it running as I would like it to be in this current meta. I do. In so the original like thing when I played it a while back was the idea of being able to make a turn one sphere and then Mike Synth Gardensing that sphere and doing some cool stuff. But the issue with that is if we don't have an ancient tomb, it's awkward. Any any like seven card hand we keep with an ancient tomb, I feel pretty good about. But unfortunately, we can't guarantee that. And I don't know if there's a way of fixing that. What we could do is we could kind of go bigger and lean slightly more into the cloud posts. So run sort of a cloud post, a colorless cloud post deck, but with some like tangle wire pieces. Because what tangle wire is good for is if you making land drops is going to be good, right? So if, if you just want the game to go on for a few turns, tangle wire basically says, you know, buy two turns. It kind of lets the the game stall out for a couple of turns. If you're just trying to make land drops and then play something big at the end of it, like worm coils or whatever, maybe that works and that's something we can look at. So I'm going to have a think and see where I want to be with this sort of style deck in the future. I know, um, I think Phil recently played a Staxi deck that was a bit different with Urza Sagas and Trinispheres and more like fast mana. So it had Chrome Moxes and stuff and was playing like a White Splash because of it. I'm not convinced you want to be doing that but I'm not convinced you want to be doing this either so there's got to be something we can try any ideas pop them in the comments let me have a look I'm always open to ideas and suggestions also you can jump on my discord the links in the description just chat about it there too all right I think we're done for today so remember to like and subscribe and if you would like a donation deck on the channel I'll play most things to be fair um, by all means get in touch via the discord or just leave me a message and I'll get back to you and once again thank you so much for watching and goodbye. If you'd like to support me in the channel, please check out my Patreon. It has a free guide to budget turbo depths as well as three tiers of support. A low cost one that enters you into my monthly raffle for a free donation deck on the channel, 
a mid-tier subscription that gives you access to my detailed TurboDebts guide that is updated every month as well as regular articles. And lastly, the higher tier gives you all of the above as well as a monthly donation deck for my channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel this way, please check out the link in the description.